What's up everyone, Alistair here, and this is a simple, short kind of tutorial guide on how to craft using fractured items, and how to make good synthesized bases. So, for us to understand this, you're going to have to understand how the synthesizer works and what it checks for. And it checks for four things. Let's go up to the synthesizer. First thing it checks for is eye level. Now, this is a simple one. You got eye level 3 items, 82, 84, 82 here. Could be anything, could be 230s and an 80 or whatever. It takes the highest one, and that's the eye level of your end item. Cool. So, here, 84 is the highest. No matter what, when we synthesize it, we'll get an 84. Second thing it checks for is bases. So, for example, this is a Devout Chainmail, this is a Kabbalist Regalia, and this is a Commander's Brigandine. It could be any one of those three. It's an equal way to chance one out of three when we synthesize third devout, a third Kabbalist, a third commanders, we'll find out. If you want to guarantee it, you can go, well, three, or if you want to get a better chance, two to one, and that's basically how your odds are going to work. Again, fairly simple. The next thing is the one that kind of gets people a bit miffed, and that's how many implicit modifiers are going to be on the item. Now, I can't give you a guaranteed response because I wasn't able to get enough statistical data to get 100% confirmation, but from my tests, from observing other people's tests, I can give you with pretty high confidence that it is not a division, it's not an, you add the 3 and then you divide it by 3, that's not how it works. It is rather a chance, so like, this is a 2 item, these are two ones. there is a chance that I will get a 2, but a higher chance that I will get a single implicit. And I can guarantee this because I've seen tests and I've done tests myself with a 3 implicit item along with 2 single implicits giving you a 3 implicit outcome. Now if you do it mathematically with the adding you'd get 3 plus 1 plus 1 that's 5 divided by 3 that's about 1.65, 1.7. There's no way you're rounding that up or down to 3 in any world. So yeah, it's essentially a chance. We're not sure if it's weighted. It might be. It probably is. It's PoE. Usually weight, things are weighted away from the higher amount of implicits. But these are all just assumptions, do with them what you will. However, you can guarantee if you put in three twos or three threes that you will get a double implicit or a triple implicit item. So that's how the implicit works. And finally, the stat that the implicit actually gets. And this is the one where people often put in gear and they're like, I don't get it, I put it in an ES chest with some life and like I got really weird implicits and stuff. But what it does is the synthesizer will look at every single stat of every single item so, all the stats on this one, all the stats on this one, and all the stats on this one, and pick one per implicit. It can't pick the same one twice. So if you have two implicits, it'll pick two. But say you have one implicit, to make it simple, it can take any one of these stats. So you can get 23 strength as your stat, and then your implicit will be strength-based. Now you might say, okay, but like, then sometimes I got, I had strength, and I had a good strength roll, or a bad strength roll, what influences that? Basically, once it's picked its stat, so let's stick with strength for this example, it will pick strength, it will then look at the total amount of strength on all the items which are in the bench. So here's no strength, and here's 24 strength. It then adds them up, so 24 plus 23 is 47, and so it'll look at 47. And you might be wondering, what is this value for? And this is where we have to go to PoEDB. Yes, I know, it's long, and there's a lot of information, but once you understand how it works, trust me, it's not that complicated, and you'll be able to search through it in a second. So, without further ado, PoEDB, if it will load. Thank you very much for the work, and shout out to whoever maintains PoEDB, I'm not actually familiar with that, but uh, they do a great job, and it's always great every league to be able to check out some of this information. So we see all this, we're gonna, we're gonna check, uh, chuck straight over to uh, body armor. Actually, we're gonna we can do it how we would uh, how we would normally do it. So we'll go here, we'll go to the search bar, and we're gonna search strength. So let, let, let's let's assume we only have strength as our stat, right? In this example, because we'll we'll figure out how to get that later. So we've got body armor, we've got strength. Okay, number to strength, so it's two hundred. So the way these numbers work, you might think, how the hell do I get two hundred strength? All these numbers, right? And do you see like here this, these strength numbers say 40, 70, 100? They work not as straight numbers, just as ranges. So for example, this number to strength that gives me plus six to eight strength as an implicit is a range from zero to 40. So if on all these pieces I have zero to 40, I will get plus six to eight strength implicit that you can then modify with a blessed orb in that range. If I have more than 40, so 41 to 70, I then jump to the next tier, nine to 11 strength. 
In our case, we have 43, so if we do this and it picks strength, we will get probably 9 to 11 strength. The exception that sometimes there is various mods you can roll. We'll cover that in a second. And then there you go. And like the 70s, 9 to 11, 100s, 12 to 14, 130s, 15 to 17, 160s, 18 to 20. And then basically, once you pass the 160, so say with like 55, 55, and 51 or rolls around those ranges, you get to 161, you will reach the final tier, which is 200 here for body armor. So when you get to 200, which is the final tier, the final tier usually always has a special roll. Here, it's a chance, however. You can either get 18 to 20 strength or gain an endurance charge every second if you've been hit recently. Now, we don't really know how the weighted work, how the weighted system works. Um, it might be a 50-50. It might be weighted towards the good mod, weighted towards the bad mod. I just don't have enough statistical data to be able to guarantee a result here. However, um, I, in my test, I've generally gotten the special mod most of the times I've tried. So maybe I'm just lucky. Maybe not. Can't really guarantee anything there. But what you're going to want to do if you want this mod is you're going to want to get body armors with at least 161 total strength and strength for strength to be the stat that you've chosen. So how do you do that? And this is where you basically have to choose your crafting method. There are two essential crafting methods you can do. All right, so now you know how a synthesizer picks the base, picks the eye level, picks the mod, and what those mods can give. So what's the next step? Well, the next step is figuring out what do you want to craft? Because there is a billion amounts of crafts out there and you need to figure out what do you want to make either to sell or to use. So for illustration's sake, I decided to try and make myself a belt. So I go on POEDB. I'm using an ES belt, so I figured I'd go for an ES belt. I went to check the belt values for flat ES. And I saw that if I get above 130, 100, being 131 to 500 the range, I can get either 14 16% increased max ES, which is pretty good, or 1.2 to 2.2% of max ES regen per second while affected by discipline. All right, so why not try that? And this is essentially where it gets to the point where you have to choose, are you going the expensive guaranteed way or the cheaper not guaranteed way? So first off, for high ticket items that have a guaranteed outcome, I'd recommend just going all in. How you're gonna do this is synthesizers have to synthesize rare items, but you don't want all these other mods. You don't want to have them to have these random thing. I don't want it to choose stun and block recovery or stun and block recovery again. Jesus, that'd be terrible. So first off, you're gonna to wanna to scour all your items. Now they're only left with the one mod on them. And it's important to note that it cannot choose the implicit if the item already has an implicit. So rings and belts and all that, whatever the base is, it doesn't matter. It's not a potential choice in the synthesizer. Now you're going to have to turn them into rares. And I'm pretty sure you can see where this is going due to the annul in the inventory. But basically you're going to annul the extra mod that you got so that you end up with a rare with one stat. Now you put these in the synthesizer. The base item here doesn't matter at all because it's jewelry. The base item is only the implicit, which you're changing anyway. The eye level is kind of important for crafting afterwards, but 77 is pretty much good enough just for, you know, for this example here. And then you just synthesize. It's going to add these three. 46 plus 44 is 100. Oh, sorry, 90. 90 plus 45 is 135. We're above 130, so we should either get max ES or the discipline ES regen. Synthesize it get ourselves a bet we got the max es so we kind of lost out on the roll too bad but hey 15 percent increased max es not that bad this belt is probably garbage indeed it's garbage but now we can craft it and we have a belt that just has 15 percent max es bless it up to 16 and cool um yeah in this case we've just lost money because you know uh annuls are expensive and this belt's probably not worth all that much but sometimes if you get the good base and do the good stuff and or you have to gamble you might make a lot of money i mean the discipline es regen is pretty valuable in my eyes so what do you want to do if you don't want to have to blow these things if you're already gambling anyway but you just kind of want to try yeah let's try some some cool items buy some bases for like one two c and fuck it you know see maybe we get something cool well the cheaper alternative is you just regal and you go with the 50 50 because three out of your six mods are what you want and then the other three aren't 
Mm, so yeah, that's pretty much it. So for example, these things, they just have some ES on them. They're like just T3, they're not great. But you know, I'd, I'd like just a bit of extra ES on my hypnotic eye. Cool. It's not even a guarantee to hypnotic eye. I'm just, just throwing it on there just to try. And then I regal them. So, I did that, now I throw these in. If you're using items you can craft on, so for example, helmets or whatever, you can improve your chances even further by just regaling and then crafting a stat you'd like. So for example, um, crafting percent yes or flat yes. You know, just as an extra potential getting something good. Cool. Then you throw these in, and you know, this is way cheaper because you saved about 40 chaos that you didn't spell on a nulls, but you're only on a 50-50, so let's see, do we win the 50-50? We won the 50-50, it's a pretty terrible roll because it's a low thing, but hey, we just get four extra ES for free. So that's really cost us, well, what would have been three scouts and three regals if I wasn't a bit scared of losing the 50-50. And there you go. And now we have ourselves a jewel that we can roll, and no matter what, it will always have four more ES than any other hypnotic eye jewel. It's also eye level 80. So, not too bad. And that basically covers how you're going to do crafting in this. You're going to want to pick something, any mod on PoEDB. You're going to want to aim for it, you're going to want to see what's the range you need to achieve, and then you're going to want to choose, do I want to risk a 50-50 roll, or do I want to just spend the 39, 40 chaos, whatever annuls are, to guarantee that I get the top tier. And yeah, that's that's pretty much it from here. Uh, one extra tip, of course at the end actually, is uh, that fractured items that have two mods are really good, obviously not just for the fact that you can get two mods, but because when you scour them, they stay as rares. So you can scour this, and it will be a rare item. See, like, magic item can't have two prefixes. So, double bases, if you can get double bases with the same mods, are basically guaranteed you just for the price of a scour to get a double implicit with those two mods. You get a mix, and you're rolling the dice. It's all about risk and reward, what you're willing to do. If you want to do some cheap, fun, potentially high rewarding crafting, or you just want to be like, I'm going to put in the big bucks and get the good items. Anyway, I hope this uh, clarified the whole synthesis crafting mechanic to you guys. Uh, I know after I took some time uh, figuring it out myself, I pretty much understand everything that it is. Yes, it can be very rewarding. Yes, it is very expensive to use. I think it could use some tweaking. I think some of the lower things could be better just so they don't feel as terrible because they're competing against Shaper and Elder Gear and some very powerful uniques. So overall, all the lower tiers just kind of feel too underwhelming to me, and double and triple uh, mods kind of feel slightly too rare at this time, especially considering the fact that they have to be good and high tier rolls. So overall, I'd say the synthesis crafting system is pretty cool. It's got a lot of potential depth to it. You can make some cool stuff, um, you know, have fun. I hope you enjoy it. And I hope you enjoy this guide, and I will be streaming as usual, so if you have any questions you want to ask more specifically, or anything that you'd like me to cover in a later video, please let me know. Uh, come on over to my Twitch, or post a comment, and I will work on that next. Anyway, have a wonderful day everyone, thanks so much for watching and for hanging out. I will catch you guys next time, I'm Alistair, take it easy.